Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to be discussing the pros and cons about being adopted. And I honestly came up with this video idea in the shower, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Before we get into the pros and cons, make sure you are subscribed to my channel. It would mean the absolute world to me. And also follow me on Instagram. I am trying to get some more following on that platform and I've been really working hard on my photos, so I would really appreciate it. Okay, I think with that being said, I'm just gonna jump on into these pros and cons. Before I say anything in this video, everyone's adoption story and experience is different. This is just kind of my general ideas and everyone has their own set of circumstances and I just picked pros and cons that I might think are applicable as a pro or a con. They can be interpreted as any way you want to interpret them. So don't feel like this is the end all be all video because everyone has a story. And if you wanna hear different experiences, um, check out other people's channels. But I just wanted to preface this video with that because there's some of these that some people might not think is a pro or might not think as a con. I'm going to start off with the cons so we end more on a positive note with the pros. I think that'll just be more positive for this video. So the first con I could think of, and I think this is the biggest con, is not knowing your medical history. So if you don't know your biological parents, then you will not know if, you know, your biological grandmother died of ovarian cancer or, you know, had some sort of disease, died of Alzheimer's. You don't know that. Um, that could also be a pro because I'm kind of of the mindset of like, maybe I don't want to know that because then you'll just be stressing about it your entire life, like worrying like, okay, when is am I going to get X disease or this type of cancer or something like that? Um, also, you don't have to have something running in your um, DNA to be prone to cancer because like anyone can get it and anyone can get diseases and stuff. So I mean, knowing that can be a positive or a negative. I kind of see it as a negative and I put it in the negative category because, you know, it would probably be better to know, but I personally don't mind not knowing because because I wouldn't want to be concerned with anything um, before anything even happens. You know what I mean? So definitely medical history is a con because you just might not know. Okay, so the next con is curiosity. Who do I look like? Do I resemble more my biological father or my biological mother? Um, what genes do I have from who? What if I look like my great great grandmother you know so you just don't know and i think it's interesting that some people might not ever know like i might not ever know which i think is a con because if someone wanted to know i mean it could be kind of sad but i don't really mind like it's not like a life or death situation but definitely curiosity is a more negative um thing because you know you might want to know and sometimes people will never know another con that you know some adoptees might feel is being unwanted feeling unwanted like their biological parents didn't want them um so they put them up for adoption you know that's like a tragic like that's really sad you know to think that and and have that perspective on things you know um i tend to not look at it like that um i tend to look at it from a different perspective but i'm just talking about the cons right now so definitely the feeling of not being wanted is definitely a con for many adoptees out there. The next con is that coming to the realization that you were like legitimately abandoned and that is a, like a triggering word probably. If you are adopted like you're technically abandoned by another human being you know so I think that can be a con because you just have to be aware that you really were abandoned like I was left on a busy road in like a box probably or something as a baby on the side of the road so just coming to the realization in terms that you're abandoned is definitely a con because psychologically that can do some damage on someone and the last con i could really think of is the trauma sometimes adoptees are older when they get adopted um like in their teens or you know their preteen years and they could have endured some trauma um whether that be like with an older 
person in their life or any sort of trauma that could be dealt with with power, um, physical abuse, mental abuse, like things can happen and that's why the adopted person or adoptee could act a certain way or have certain viewpoints because they endured some sort of trauma or abuse um, before they were adopted. If I leave out anything from the con list, I will put it in the description box, but those are the cons I could really think of when it comes to adoption. Oh, another thing that I wanted to add to the con list um, is family separation, whether that be with the biological parents and the biological child or just like separations of families. There's a lot of people, well not a lot, but there's like, I don't know, a few people in the adoption community that probably think like separating biological families is totally wrong. Wrong. So that could definitely be considered a con when talking about adoption um, if we want to use the word like biological family preservation. I think that's what a YouTuber said in one of her videos. I just wanted to throw that in there because someone could also interpret just the mere fact of the separation from um, biologically connected people as a con. Again, my viewpoint is a little bit different, but I just wanted to include that in the con list. Moving on, on a more positive note, let's talk about the pros of being adopted. The first pro I wrote down was, you don't have a preconceived notion of the way you look. So many times in families, biological families, they see a parent figure, grandma, uncle, aunt, whatever, have like a weight issue. When I say weight issue, I'm not saying like, you know, they're morbidly obese, like my 600 pound life, but they probably see that their biological uh, figures or DNA that's in front of them is bigger and maybe they're concerned and maybe that might trigger an ED or of some sort, which is obviously not good. If you don't know who you look like, like I don't know anything about my biological family or anything. I don't have any preconceived notions to know, oh my gosh, my biological mom is like, you know, huge or oh my gosh, she's like really lean and muscular. Like I just really don't know that. So I don't have this, this mindset or this way of thinking because I think I'm gonna end up looking like something. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm just glad that I don't have that in my life. You know, I don't have something in front of me saying, this is what you're gonna look like when you're 40 years old. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. The next pro I wrote down was probably have a more privileged life than if you were in another situation. Now this again is all just an idea. This doesn't target anyone in particular, but let's Let's just say a birth mother had a problem and it just wouldn't work out in the long run if the child was always like jumping, you know, foster care to foster care or in the system or something and they wanted a permanent home. Adoption was probably the best choice for that individual. You know, I'm trying to like walk a fine line because again, this isn't for everyone, um, but I'm just presenting like generalizations. So if a parent, you know, wasn't ready to be a parent yet and they knew that in their heart, but they wanted an opportunity for their child to have opportunities and to blossom and to have the financial way to live a good financial life that could, you know, take them to dance or cheerleading or singing or pageants or uh, volleyball or soccer, you know, if they knew that they couldn't provide that for that child, and they wanted that for that child, then they should be, you know, given to a home that can provide that. Wanting more for their biological child than they could provide, which that's a way of looking at it. And I feel like I definitely lead a more privileged life um, than a lot of others. If I were in a different situation, if I did grow up on the streets of China or something like that, I definitely wouldn't have the opportunities I would have if I had not been adopted, if that makes sense. Okay, so so this is like a short pro, so I'm not gonna go like too in depth with it because it doesn't really apply to me, but I wrote down the child might be bilingual because if they grew up in a household that spoke a different language, then they could be bilingual. So they could speak Spanish or German or Chinese, Mandarin, any sort of language. And again, that goes back to opportunities. If they were allowed or able to study abroad, like one of my shaman sisters, I I mean, she speaks German, which I think is so cool. And that's another opportunity that 
they might have not gotten if they were in a different situation, if you know what I mean. Another pro I wanted to include is feeling chosen. Um, you were placed with a family and the family wanted you because they chose you, they wanted you. So that's also a feeling of want, which kind of goes against my con of feeling like abandoned and everything. I don't know if that one balances each other out, but definitely the feeling of being wanted, those people, those individuals that said they wanted a child and they went to go to fulfill that want that yeah that should make you feel wanted like they wanted a child and they took actions to get a child and that should make you feel wanted now I don't I won't guarantee that make will make you feel wanted but and my last pro for this video that I could really think of and this kind of goes with being wanted your parents had to do a lot of work to get you paperwork background checks meetings maybe classes there's a lot of stuff that parents have to go through when they want to adopt a child um, to even get you. And I'm not trying to say that like, oh, trying to conceive a child um, traditionally, you know, with intercourse isn't challenging because it's challenging for many people that suffer from infertility and different various things. So I'm not saying that like, oh, it's harder to adopt. I'm just saying that when someone wants to adopt, they've made that choice and then they have to go through a process. Um, I understand people that do IVF and different ways to conceive a child also go through a lot of process. So it's definitely different in all situations, obviously, but just know that people that choose to adopt have to go through a lot of work to get a child. It's not just like, you know, sexual intercourse to produce a child. It ha you have to like go through many hoops. I hope you guys took something from this video. If I missed anything or you want to share your thoughts and feelings, leave them in the comments down below. I would really love to hear your take on this situation and topic because I just thought of it again in the shower and I wanted to share my thoughts with you guys. Um, I love hearing your perspectives in the comments from, you know, non-adoptees, adoptees, because we all have different stories, different backgrounds and everything. And I love to hear what you guys have to say. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up for me. It really helps out my channel. Also leave that comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.